Welcome to the Album Review Channel. My name is Dave and today I'm looking at the sophomore album from the band Marillion called Fugazi. Now this one was recorded between November 1983 and February 1984 and it was released on the 12th of March 1984 on EMI Records and followed on from the previous year's debut album Script for a Jester's Tear. Now I've reviewed that album a while back and we'll put a link to the review up here somewhere. The success in the UK reached number 5 in the UK charts. Elsewhere there was only limited success and it's only reached 209 on the Billboard album chart. Two singles were released from this one. Punch and Judy was released on the 30th of January 1984, picking at 29 on the UK charts, and Assassin on the 30th of April, and that reached number 22 in the UK. The album was named after the military slang term for something that is fake or damaged beyond repair and featured an expressive album cover designed by Mark Wilkinson, a fish essentially in a state of fugacy after appearing worse for wear and tear. The album's got seven tracks on it, it lasts for 46 minutes and included the debut of drummer Ian Mosley, with the band's previous drummer Mick Pointer, who had been sacked as the band really didn't feel he had the right fit. Other than that change, the band remained the same with Fish on vocals, Steve Rothery on guitar, Mark Kelly on the keys and Pete Trovas on bass. This is an album I'm not familiar with at all, so it is a genuine first listen. The opening track was one of the singles in Assassin and it lasted seven minutes. There was a, an actual single version that had been edited down to just three minutes. There's a strong drum-led opening and this boosts the feeling of quite majesty to it. It's written around the theme of manipulation, deceit and the consequences of your actions. Musically, it's powerful and has a driving bass to it. This sense of urgency perfectly matches the lyrical themes that it includes. The Truavas bass pumps along with a Eye of the Tiger feel to it, along with that 80s sounding synth, all building up the tension before all start competing with Fishy's artistic vocal delivery from around the two minute mark. Inevitably there's a lovely Steve Rothery lead, and this is included in the instrumental break along with Mark Kelly on a synth solo. There's a change of tempo at around four and a half minutes. This is a welcome addition before it reverts back to the opening section again to finish it all off. It's a decent start. The second track is the other single release in Punch and Judy. It is the song of a relationship, not so much gone bad but just fizzled out, and is all that the track describes. Where once there was passion and romance, all that's left now is a apathy and argument. There's an unorthodox rhythm to this one that supports the complex territory and the subject. Fish repeats the name of Judy quite frequently to stress that she may represent the desire for the divorce, so needed for the two of them. It's a big musical contribution on this one, and although only three and a half minutes, it packs a real punch. Excuse the pun. Jigsaw is the third track, and... Standout here is the solo from Steve Rothery, which is just sublime. It is a ballad and fish vocals are more calm this time around, with Mark Kelly playing some delightful yet delicate keyboards that sound like chiming bells. There's a hint of lavender here for me, but as I love that track, it's fine with me. Now whilst the fish vocals are measured, they do explode for chorus, and that suits the intensity of the track. It's a great touch of theatre. Whilst listening, I felt that the style and intensity of the drumming seemed different, and on closer investigation, found out that this was the track that debuted Ian Mosley, and really that difference is quite tangible. I was unsure why the song was not called Ricochet rather than Jigsaw, but looking at the lyrics, I got that as it's about breakups and makeups, each time the makeup it loses a little piece of that relationship that's never replaced. Hence Jigsaw. Quite sad, really. The fourth of the seven songs is Emerald Lies, and it's a really dark song about tackling infidelity. But it's based on really, well, no evidence whatsoever. The song was a leftover from the first album, and there's a feeling that it might not have been the strongest 
in the first place. There's an over-the-top opening set of lines delivered by Fish, and it feels a bit too grand when compared to what's been on the album this fall. When the band do join in, there's some strong drums played from Mosley, keeping the changes in tempo in order. Just around the five minutes, this one feels so much shorter and is one I would skip if listening to the album again. Not my favourite. She Chameleon starts off with a mesmerising organ riff that is continued throughout the track. There are some heavy drum fills within this one that add to the atmosphere. There is the requisite rubbery guitar solo, but it is such an important icing to most of these songs, they just wouldn't have the same impact without these and they should never be taken for granted. This song is about casual sex, and knowing the subject matter, the tone of the lyrics and music fits so much better with that knowledge. There's a real cynical edge to the words. And looking to research the reference to Lizard throughout, there is a suggestion that it relates to the woman's deceptive nature, although the links were really only tenuous. Incubus is the penultimate track, and again as referring to sexual mistreatment, this time through the eyes of one used for gratification, and then really discarded as something of no value. The twist here is that the incubus turns the tables on those who have mistreated her in the past until they become the ones in the position of power. Fish has described this track as his favourite from all of his time with the band. I praise indeed. There is a similarity in the content between some of these songs, but Fish does manage to vary the slant to these pieces. It's a broody piece, but with some good keyboards from Mark Kelly, and his input into these last couple of tracks has been really quite impressive. The tempo it sets allows some excellent expansion of the delivery of the lyrics to maximum effect. I end with the title track, and this starts with a simple piano and a Fish intro. The track takes off with the staccato rhythm section controlling it all before the track explodes with some exciting synths from Kelly. Fish sings of a world dominated by hopelessness, desolation and frustration, obsessed with materialistic values. There is quite a strange spoken section, it's presumably from Fish, but I'm not entirely sure before the spitting out of more lyrics of distaste a little bit later on into the song. It is very effective though, and has the band contributing at just the right level as well. At four and a half minutes, the place stops, with a plunging synth line from Kelly, before lyrics begin again, this time at a slower pace. It's hard-hitting, and does take some listening to, but it's a really good track. There's even time for one final contribution from the master of Steve Rothery to end what has been an enjoyable look through this album for me. I feel having finished this album is that it's not the very best album Marillion have ever recorded, but it is still very good indeed. There was no one song I disliked. In fact, more the opposite. Punch and Judy may become my least favourite once I am completely immersed in this album, but at this point it is an okay track only. The feeling is that this may have been as good as it got for this incarnation of the band, and two albums later, Fish was gone. My preference is to listen to what is in front of me, avoid any politics and write about what I hear, and that is a really good album, with the two closing tracks being particular highlights. I would go out and buy it to add to my physical record collection in a heartbeat, and I think it's a really good album. Now tell me what you think of this one down below in the comments section. There's a link to purchase the album if it's not already in your collection, or a free trial to Amazon Music should you wish to try the whole album out before committing, or simply wish to help the channel out to continue to bring you new videos for your enjoyment. That's also in the description box. Things like a share, comment, like or subscribe are real indicators that you are enjoying the content. Help me out if you will. Other than that, thanks for watching this edition, and on screen now is a link to a review of the most recent Marillion album I did earlier on last year. I'll see you next time on the Album Review Channel.